Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. All right, that's a, that's a little bit better. My name is Thomas Payton, president of the Canton Chamber of Commerce, and it is my pleasure to officially welcome you as host and MC for this year's 2024 State of Canton Township Address. We eagerly look forward to hearing from Supervisor Graham Hudak as she delivers her official state of the township address. But before we get into our program, we of course would like to acknowledge and recognize our sponsors for uh, this year's event. Um, first up, we had uh, our major sponsor, uh, Jack Dimmer Ford. Round of applause for Jack Dimmer Ford, please. Uh, please stand, they're sitting right back here. Please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Jack Dimmer has been a uh, staple in this community and to the chamber for, for many years, so we always appreciate uh, the support of Jack Dimmer Ford. Our second major sponsor for this year's event was Schoolcraft College. Uh, please stand and be recognized. All right, there. Okay. And again, a uh, supporter of the community, uh, very involved in the, in the chamber for, for many years, so we thank Schoolcraft for their support of this year's event as well. So just a round of applause for both Jack Demmer and Schoolcraft, please. <laughs> also, before we get started, we will also like to welcome our uh, elected officials from our neighboring communities that are guests of ours uh, this afternoon as well. Um, first, uh, as I call your name, please stand and be recognized. From Congresswoman Dingle's office, Alexa Pierzynski. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Deputy Wayne County Executive, Asad Turfey. He's en route. <laughs> uh, Wayne County Commissioner, Melissa Dobb. <laughs> Van Buren Township Supervisor, Kevin McNamara. Northville Township Supervisor, Mark Abel. <laughs> Northville Mayor, Brian Turnbull. <laughs> Wayne Mayor, John Rasa. <laughs> Huron Township Supervisor, David Glabe. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, we would like to welcome our Superintendent of Plymouth Canton Schools, Dr. Monica Merritt. So we welcome all of you. And also, if we could have our Canton Township Board of Trustees please stand and be recognized. You know, I think I speak for all of us when I say that it is an absolute pleasure to be a part of the Canton community. Whether you are a resident here, you work here, you own a business here, Canton is truly the place to be. This is always a special event for our chamber, for the Canton community that so many look forward to and we eagerly look forward to the informative presentation that's been prepared for us this afternoon. A little bit about our township supervisor. Anna Marie was elected as Canton Township's first female supervisor in November of 2020. Prior to becoming Canton Township Supervisor, she served as a Canton Trustee and Planning Commissioner for four years. Anne Marie has an extensive engineering background, having worked for the automotive industry for 26 years and the Federal Aviation Administration prior to that. Anne Marie represents Canton by serving on numerous local and regional boards. She is serving as Chair of the Conference of Western Wayne 35th District Court Authority and Vice Chair of the Western Townships Utilities Authority Board as well as treasurer of the Conference of Western Wayne. Anna Marie is on the Southeast Michigan Council of Government's Executive Committee and the Regional Review Committee. Her past and present community service includes several director positions for the League of Women Voters, chair of Plymouth Canton Citizens for Diversity Interfaith Community Outreach Group, or ICO, and board member of the South Asian American Voices for Impact. Anna Marie's direct involvement in these organizations strengthens Canton's uh, partnerships and collaborations, both on the local, regional, and state levels. It also gives Canton a voice as projects are being planned and decisions are being made. 
as well as continuing to build a strong, rich, and diverse community. Anne Marie and her husband, Hatley, who's here somewhere, <laughs> um, and their three sons, Martin, Jonathan, and Hatley, one daughter-in-law, Molly, one daughter, Elise, and a grandchild, Marty. Anna Marie holds an engineering degree from Boston University and an MBA from Lawrence Tech. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Kent Township Supervisor Anna Marie Graham Hudak. Okay, great. I just want to come out here and do a few more introductions. So can we have the lights up, please? So we're here also because the Canton Chamber of Commerce brought us here. So can we have everybody who's part of the Canton Chamber please stand up? Come on, stand up, everyone who's part of the Canton and the board. We also have the elected officials who are supporting us and our region. Stand right here. Could you please stand up again, all of the, our neighborings? <laughs> now all of our businesses. Thank you for attending, and you've supported our community. Could you please stand up, all of our businesses? I know you're out there. Thank you. Now we have a lot of vendors here. So vendors support our work and they help us with all of our projects that we've got going on. So can our vendors stand up? We've got a lot of you here. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Our school partners, can you please stand up? We have Schoolcraft here, Superintendent, there you go. Now our employees. Can all of our employees who are in the room and outside of the room stand up? You up, I can see you standing up there too. <laughs> Thank you. And any residents, I don't want to leave you out. Are there any residents? Please stand up. <laughs> I know there's more. Yay! We do all of this for you. <laughs> it's important because you see everybody here and they are important to us and they are make who, what makes us what we're gonna do and what you're gonna see in this video. But I'd like to start with a couple things. Thank you for coming out today for Canton's 2024 State of the Township presentation. Before we begin, I'd like to just say thank you again and thank you to the Canton Chamber of Commerce for supporting us. Oh, I thought I already had everybody stand up, okay. Many of our elected officials here are partners with us in the 35th District Court, advisory boards and wastewater treatment facilities. The elected officials you see that have joined us, and we're partners in everything we do because if all of us don't work together, the region doesn't stand. But also in, in attendance are our Canton trustees. You will hear from Treasurer Slavens and Clerk Seegers in a few minutes in the video, so I'll leave that section to them. But I'd like to just talk to, about the trustees because they have worked with us hard on our, their passion projects. So please stand as I call your name. Steven Snydeman, who has been the driving force behind extending our trail system, among other things, as well as serving the community as trustee for 12 years. Thank you, Steven. <laughs> Kate Berninski, who is an advocate for eliminating park deserts in our community by creating pocket parks wherever possible, as well as working on the Canton Nature Initiatives. Summer Foster, who's not here, she is working at her other job. She's worked tirelessly to expand and improve our police social worker program, police partnership program, and lead our roads program. <laughs> Tanya Ganguly, who has worked hand in hand with our human resources division on updating our merit policy and workforce development. <laughs> Diane Slavens was our previous state representative and for seven years has served as our treasurer. You can stand up. Clerk Segris has also been our clerk for seven years and has served as our treasurer, and he's president of all the statewide clerk offices possible. <laughs> and while the video you're about to see covers a great deal of what's going on in Canton Township, there are a few other highlights I'd like to mention. We heard our residents and we have signed a new waste hauling contract that will go into effect in August. We've also made a concentrated effort to focus on pre-funding our employee pension costs while successfully negotiating agreements on four of the union contracts last year. And also a new break room for our employees is being developed. 
Together, the entire Board of Trustees and staff have moved our stormwater management forward with studies being conducted to de determine any and all challenges that we had this past August. As you know, I mean, what it, let's, let's think about what we've gone together in the last four years. We had COVID, we had a flood, we had tornadoes. Now we have a snowstorm. <laughs> but the snowstorm is here because I did my hair this morning, so it looked a lot better, just to let you know. In the past three and a half years, in partnership with our county, federal, and state partners, we have brought back a record number of over $30 million to projects for residents and business in, in Canton Township. In the past year, we've recently received another $20,000 in grants to plant new trees in Heritage and Griffin Park, so we're going to have a big celebration for that. In December 2023, the Conference of Western Wayne, which many of us belong to, approved funding for Airspace Link, a startup located at Michigan Central to assess the airspace in 18 Western Wayne County communities for drone integration. And Anna is here. There you are, Anna. She's ahead of that, that effort. With companies like FedEx, Domino's, Walmart, and Amazon increasingly using drones to deliver packages, airspace valuation is essential to future economic development and bringing jobs here. Drone integration is also important to public safety, as we have used them in many of our cases. Strategic plans and economic development and communications will soon be released. Our public safety team, along with trustees and regional partners, are working hard to support residents through mental health crises and substance abuse challenges, which our communities are still experiencing. We have a Growth Works here in Hagira who help us with that. As leaders, we must also nurture the growth of technology jobs that will reshape our lives and keep this employment here. That's why township supervisors and mayors of cities along Michigan Avenue between Detroit and Ann Arbor, as well as the University of Michigan, have formed the Michigan Avenue Innovation Network, the Maine. The primary purpose of this is to give technology companies another place to cluster in southeastern Michigan, along the state's most populous and historically important road. If anyone didn't know, it's the second oldest road in Michigan, Woodward Avenue being, being the first. The communities, some of them are here. Canton, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Detroit, Inkster, Van Buren Township, Wayne, and Westland. As a region, we must stay strong together. So I know you don't want to continue hearing me talk because you want to see some awesome video. So thank you for Kristen and Thomas and our, our staff, our cable staff up there for doing this. But sit back, relax, and enjoy the 2024 State of the Township presentation. Ignore my hair there, too. OK. <laughs> Thank you. State of Canton Township is ever evolving as we continually strive to meet the needs of our residents. Our wonderfully diverse population keeps us on our toes and provides many opportunities to explore different cultures, span age and generational gaps, and to learn more about each other as neighbors. While we have much to look forward to in 2024, let's first take a look back at highlights from the last year. One very major accomplishment was the securing of millions of dollars in state grants. As part of the nearly $82 billion in state budget, Canton is slated to receive state grants totaling $14 million, thanks to the efforts of State Representative Ron G. Puri and State Senator Dana Polhanke. Those funds will go towards three very important projects in the community. $7 million for a fourth fire station, $5 million for ASR road repair, and $2 million for a new youth center. None of this funding would be coming back to Canton without Rep. Puri's efforts to bring the $14 million in grant request to the floor and the support of Senator Dana Polhanke. 
The $2 million for the new youth center will go toward renovating an old township building on Gettys Road in order to house programming for youth in our community. The grant money will be used for the planning, engineering, architectural renovations, bidding, and supervision of the renovation. The $7 million for the fourth fire station will go toward building a new fire station in the southeast corner of the township, powered by alternative energy. This project includes the planning, engineering, architecture, bidding, and construction of the facility that would be one of Michigan's only fire stations powered by alternative energy. Finally, the $5 million slated for road repair will focus on several miles of roads and sidewalks in Canton Township severely affected by the alkali silica reaction, ASR, more commonly known as the concrete cancer. They are beyond any conventional patching or repair and require the complete removal and replacement of the existing concrete. The grant funds will be added to Canton's road millage program to determine subdivision priorities and work schedules. In addition to those incredibly large grants, we also secured nearly $400,000 from the Michigan Division of the Federal Highway Administration for a Safe Streets program, over $84,000 from the Michigan Department of Education for out-of-school programming, and $20,000 from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources for the replacement of trees lost during the August tornado. Renovations were completed at Workman Square, which is a small open space located on the corner of Cherry Hill and Denton Roads. Improvements to this small parcel of land include the installation of new landscaping with the addition of pollinator plants, drainage, stone pathway pavers, and seating. Workman Square was initially designed and built as part of the overall Cherry Hill Village development and has since been owned and maintained by Canton Township. This gathering spot serves as a point of welcome to visitors of Workman Elementary School as well as those visiting Cherry Hill Village, enhancing the area's walkability with this inviting space. This designated space, located on the southwest side of Workman Elementary School grounds on Denton Road, offers a friendly and safe environment for area residents to use this inviting outdoor space who are individuals from nearby neighborhoods to take a lunch break, meet friends, and enjoy play dates. Late last year, Canton held the ZB West Nature Area naming to recognize the designation of 134 acres of undeveloped land as the ZB West Nature Area. It is located on the northwest corner of Ford and Ridge Road. This celebration featured special presentations from the members of the Pokagon Band of the Potawatomi Nation with special remarks by U.S. Representative Debbie Dinkle and Terry Campbell from Senator Steb Benno's office. We would also like to thank Debbie Dingle, Haley Stevens, and the Biden administration for the million dollars in federal funding which will be used for the park. In May of 2023, the Canton Township Board of Trustees approved this nature area designation to preserve and protect the open space, natural habitats, and green space of this parcel of undeveloped woodlands and wetlands located on the northwest section of the Canton community, which are home to many native plants and animal habitats. Canton's board looks forward to incorporating accessible trails, parking, and a nature-themed playground into the ZB West Nature Area. Along with the naming, the Canton Board of Trustees also called for the establishment of the Canton Nature Society to act as the informal caretaker for the preserve in conjunction with the township. We welcome many new businesses into the community in the last year, including Dreambox, Boutique, Buff City Soap, Big Mo's Kitchen, Crumble Cookies, Hook and Reel, Alamir, Kawa House, Cups and Chai, Soul Gold Juice Company, and many, many more. We did a little reorganizing of divisions and staff last year. We consolidated most of our communications under one division of the supervisor's office and created the Community Development Department arm of Leisure Services. We also were able to provide enhanced benefits for our employees that will increase the quality of working in the township for many years to come and are currently conducting a job classification and salary study for all merit positions within the organization. In 2023, Canton's Board of Trustees partnered with the Michigan Roundtable to begin a journey of inclusion for the entire Canton organization. Over the year, all staff participated in a foundational course, and the journey continues this year with courses in customer service, wellness and well-being, generational diversity, and the impact of allyship. Additionally, Canton recently hosted a traveling exhibit called We Don't Want Them, Race and Housing in Metropolitan Detroit. This exhibit serves as a tool to begin looking deeper into the issues of racial equity in Metro Detroit and supports our values of looking into our history in order to understand our current experiences and plan for our future. It is very important to us that we all understand and embrace the diversity that makes the Canton community so unique. 
We strive every day to provide the best service to our residents and to create a welcoming environment and community where residents feel respected. We were proud to host SEMCOG's Community EV Fleet Expo with the Summit on the Park last August. E-curious representatives from local and county governments, school districts, and community colleges in Southeast Michigan came out to explore the range of electric vehicles available for community fleets. The event also provided an opportunity for participants to interact with EVs and charging infrastructure, hear case studies from early adopters, and connect with resources and organizations across the EV space. Many of you have noticed that we have recently updated Canton's logo. The new look is an updated modern version of the Canton community tree featured in many places throughout the community. The new logo is being phased into print and electronic communications as well as staff apparel, event products such as banners and tents and more. The new look is familiar in feel, but is updated to reflect the forward motion of our vibrant community. We hope that you all like it. The newly formed Community Development Department led by new director John Lefevre had a very exciting year with many new hires and big projects. This year, Gavin Beckford was hired as Canton's new Economic Development Manager and DDA Coordinator, who has been tasked with creating, coordinating, and implementing programs to retain and attract commercial development and job creation in our community to ensure local economic growth. Current projects include Commissioning a pilot study for the development of the Michigan Avenue Innovation Network, Maine, which is a technology corridor stretching along Michigan Avenue that includes Canton, Wayne, Westland, Inkster, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, and also University of Michigan Dearborn. In addition, the DDA has been actively promoting these area businesses as well as replacing metal halide bulbs on the DDA Ford Road corridor with LED bulbs, which provides more consistent lighting, more efficient energy use, and cost savings. Additional projects included the planting of native wildflowers at major intersections, as well as securing cross-access agreements with Wendy's, Citizens Bank, and Dunkin' Donuts. This past September, Emma Kramer was hired as our resident service advocate. In this role, Emma works to provide assistance, information, and resources to residents. She takes a proactive approach to ensure residents receive efficient and timely resolutions to their needs. Emma has worked with residents on a wide array of inquiries, including questions about trash pickup, township programs, permit processes, HOA information, and a request for food, housing, and transportation resources. You can meet Emma at the Canton Administration Building, out at township events, or at board meetings. This year, Emma will be working on expanding ways residents can interact with the township, adding a resident feedback form to the website, and conducting needs assessments to ensure residents in all situations and access township services. She's also working with our ITI department on the implementation of Indigo, a new software that will enhance our responsiveness and services to the residents. Community Development added a certified therapeutic recreation specialist to their team last year with the funding provided to Canton through Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network and Wayne County. We were able to enhance the Western Wayne Therapeutic Recreation Program with the help of our partners in Wayne County which provided an additional $150,000 in funding to support this critical program and an additional $75,000 from the Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network. This allowed the program to expand daytime programming and increase programming collaborations with the Partnership for the Arts for year-round recreation services for children's ages 5 to 12 with disabilities. Due to Canton's partnership, Wayne County Executive Warren Evans to leverage $4 million $750,000 in ARPA funds, along with funding brought by the Biden administration. The initial phase of the Cherry Hill Village Revitalization Project has been completed. This included the leveling of the old garage property located at 50525 Cherry Hill Road to create additional parking, as well as the submission of proposed water feature designs to Wayne County through the contracted engineering firm OHM. A critical component of this ambitious project is creating a framework for the continued development of what will become Canton's Town Square and Cherry Hill Village. With Canton's investment in public-private partnerships, this project is sure to attract private investment as well. We keep getting calls. Other improvements include the full renovation of the corner building on the partnership campus into a community center for therapeutic recreation, after-school programming, and community events. The purchase of the Partnership for the Arts building using ARPA funds to guarantee every Canton resident an experience the arts and humanities for many years to come. New Pavilion for Farmers Markets and Preservation Park, 
renovations to the Bartlett Travis House and other buildings, as well as parking improvements and greening of space in front of the new pavilion. Being a welcoming community is one of the board's main goals. This also translates to remaining dedicated to a mission that promotes a spirit of mutual respect, feelings of belonging, and a greater sense of community for all of our neighbors. One of our endeavors includes building a strong commitment to arts and culture in Canton Township, one of which includes a partnership with the Partnership for the Arts and the Village Arts Factory. In 2023, the Village Arts Factory had a fantastic year, hosting more than 55 community events, workshops, programs, and festivals in Cherry Hill Village. This resulted in over 115 event hours and approximately 10,000 attendees and event participants. Highlights from 2023 include the Art in Bloom, Spring Artists at Market, Concerts in Cars, Fall into Art pop-up series, Kids Halloween Stroll, and Christmas in the Village. This past year also saw the addition of several new events and programs, which are sure to become annual community staples, including the Village Arts Cruise, Oktoberfest Fall Festival, Canton Youth Art Fair, and Yoga in the Village. The Fine Art Gallery at the Village Arts Factory also hosted a wide range of art exhibitions throughout the year, featuring both locally and nationally renowned artists. In addition, the Village Arts Factory partnered with Canton Leisure Services in 2023 to support several other major events in the community, such as Liberty Fest, Brew Brats and Bands, and Pride Outside. In 2023, our state-of-the-art Village Theater at Cherry Hill hosted 249 ticketed events, including concerts, plays, musicals, community and cultural events, and private rentals. The lights were on 354 days, welcoming 41,748 patrons through our doors, in addition to hosting rehearsals for our community and partner groups nearly every weeknight, a weekly quilting group every Wednesday, and various people who have come in to view our gallery space during regular box office and gallery hours. Community and partner groups presented 18 productions, ranging from studio shows to main stage musicals. Annual cultural events included the Martin Luther King Jr. It Starts With Me presentation in conjunction with the PSEP, the International Showcase and Chinese Festival. The Village Theater also hosted numerous educational opportunities, including two week-long sessions of Broadway boot camp, a month-long youth musical theater intensive camp, five interactive tours and various other workshops for scouts and classes. This summer, the Village Theater was once again home to the Michigan Shakespeare Festival for 30 performances in the months of July and August. In 2023, Canton Community Productions produced over 300 shows along with a variety of internal training videos, special event coverage and township meetings such as the Board of Trustees and Planning Commission. Cable has also started utilizing QR codes currently for training videos so they can be scanned and viewed with a phone right away. The QR code system will be more widespread throughout the township in 2024, with the addition of QR codes placed at various locations for the residents to scan and view videos that will give pertinent information about a location they are currently at. In 2024, Canton Cable will continue to be out and about at many township events, so if you see anyone with a camera walking around, smile and wave. You just may see yourself or a loved one on TV. Heritage Park, one of Canton's most popular destinations, received several improvements over the past year. One major addition was a newly installed Peace Pull Plaza. Through several generous community donations, the Peace Pull Plaza itself features a universal symbol of peace bearing the message, may peace prevail on earth, in 12 of the most spoken languages in Canton in addition to English. The plaza was erected as a symbol to promote peace, togetherness, and harmony in a tranquil area where park visitors can congregate for individual or group reflection. Utilizing community development block grants and ADA facility improvement funding sources, Heritage Park's Northeast Playground saw the addition of several accessible swings and playground equipment. It was partially funded by Wayne County Parks Village. In addition, several restrooms were upgraded in the park. Through a partnership with our Municipal Services Department, Heritage Park's pathways were also resurfaced. This past August, as Canton experienced an extreme weather event, the Heritage Park South Pavilions were destroyed, as well as over 100 trees. In addition, the Heritage Park Splash Playground suffered significant storm damage. We are working diligently to restore all amenities for public use this summer season. Our Leisure Services Department, led by Director Greg Hohenberger, 
was once again recognized for the excellence in the field of parks and recreation management by receiving national reaccreditation from the Commission for Accreditation of Parks and Recreation Agencies, also known as CAPRA. Originally accredited in 2008 for best practices related to the management and administration of programs, parklands, facilities, resources, safety, and services, Canton is currently one of three agencies accredited in the state of Michigan and one of the 206 agencies accredited in the county that have met the rigorous established standards. Laura Mortier, Canton Recreation Supervisor, was presented with the 2023 Robert W. Crawford Young Professional Award from the National Recreation and Park Association and has now joined the distinguished ranks of just over a dozen other parks and recreation professionals in the United States who have also received the same notable national award. This highly acclaimed award recognizes the vision and dedication of individuals who have tirelessly worked to improve the quality of life in America through parks and recreation and who will serve as examples for future leaders in continuing the recreation and park movement into the 21st century. Significant renovations were made to the Summit on the Parks Aquatic Center led by Canton Facilities Maintenance staff. This $2.4 million construction project included tally replacement in all pools, including the lap pool and family pool, as well as on the pool decks. In addition, tile was also replaced in the spa and sauna, as well as in the men's, women's, and family locker rooms. Further enhancements included the addition of a water feature, as well as painting of the pool deck roof. These important capital improvement project renovations are crucial for the long-term life of the pool and will ensure that our aquatic center is enjoyed for years to come. The Canton Sports Center, a popular sports destination for local softball, baseball leagues and national tournaments, is set to undergo several significant renovations in early 2024. Projects will include a new state-of-the-art LED lighting system that will improve on-field lighting and visibility in its 12 softball fields and the replacement of the concrete sidewalks leading up to its 12 softball fields. The majority of the sidewalks surrounding the facility have already been replaced. Recently completed renovations include a dining area makeover to Kicker's Bar and Grill, which is a full service restaurant located in the facility. Improvements include an updated look with a new paint color scheme and booth cushion replacements. Improvements to the Canton Sports Center have begun and are expected to be completed by April 2024, just in time for opening day. The revived interest in golf created by the pandemic continues to thrive. While youth participation in many sports continues to decline, golf is rising in popularity. Both Pheasant Run and Fellow Creeks Golf Clubs have experienced a high volume of returning players as well as an influx of players entering the game as this nationwide golf boom continues. Pheasant Run saw an increase in total revenues by 46% over a 10-year average. In addition, range revenues improved by 69% over a 10-year average. Pheasant Run was also honored to host the Michigan Public Metal Play Championship, which is a statewide 54-hole stroke play for the 11th straight year. Canton added three new pollinator gardens throughout the township, located at the Canton Dog Park, the Village Arts Factory, and the Canton Sports Center. The addition of these gardens, which contain diverse plants that are most attractive to wild pollinators, is just one example of that many ways Canton Park staff is helping to meet the Board of Trustees' goal of maintaining healthy ecosystems within our community. Under the guidance of creating habitats for pollinators, volunteers teamed up to plant native grasses and plants to help give bees and other pollinators a place to thrive in these Canton locations. Each half-acre pollinator garden will provide a dedicated habitat to attract bees, butterflies, beetles, bats, and other insects, as well as hummingbirds. Our hope is that once visitors to these areas see these gardens start to bloom, they will serve as an inspiration to others to add pollinator habitats in their yards that will become nesting sites that are critical to the survival of these local pollinators. Summit on the Park membership participation continues to increase close to pre-pandemic levels. The Summit is home to active fitness and aquatic centers, dance and aerobics studios, gymnasium, Canton Club 55 Plus, and remains a central location for numerous recreation classes, programs, and events. Our recent Cyber Monday Summit membership special sold a total of 384 membership packages, which generated over $140,000 in revenue in just one day, illustrating the need and interest of individuals to make health and wellness a top priority. The Canton Farmer's Market continues to thrive in Cherry Hill Village, drawing growing crowds to this open-air market during its regular season from mid-May through mid-October in Preservation Park. 
In addition, it hosts a holiday artisan market and is currently hosting off-season winter markets monthly inside the Summit on the Park Banquet Center. What do you think of when you hear trips, exercise, movies, knitting, billiards, euchre, mahjong, pinnacle, wood carving, bingo, if you haven't guessed it, it's our Canton Club 55 plus. We have very active seniors in Canton and the club is always growing and very diverse. 2023 also saw the Refresh Senior Summit. Over 20 sponsors and 300 seniors signed up for a fun day of learning, health, clinics, and fun. We look forward to this again in 2024. Canton Police Department, led by Director Chad Bow, integrates key concepts around police presence, partnerships through engagement, and direction from Canton's leadership team. Late last year saw the completion of Public Safety's Building and Dispatch Enhancement Project, signifying a notable achievement for the needs of our residents and staff. Our team exhibited dedication, strategic foresight, and effective implementation during this project. The role of the Business Operations Manager was crucial in guiding this project to fruition displaying outstanding leadership and a deep understanding of our community's specific needs. The police department has seen significant strides in achieving core township goals. The integration of civilian oversight into its operations has ensured a balanced, community-focused approach. The transition of embedded social workers to direct hired positions as police clinicians in the township has been instrumental in strengthening the bond between our officers and the community. The expansion of diversion programs exemplifies our commitment to progressive law enforcement practices, and the department's commitment to transparency is evident in our operational dashboard and civilian oversight subcommittee. Moreover, the police department's plan to incorporate more hybrid and electric vehicles into its fleet underscores our forward-looking stance. This last year was marked with significant headway in recruitment to address the national police officer shortage. Additionally, department has embarked on shaping a culture that fits our expectations internally and externally. We help negotiate substantial union agreements, demonstrating our proactive approach to solving what has been seen as impossible recruiting issues. By year's end, the department positioned itself as a preferred destination for lateral police officer transfers and military applicants. Further, the department is developing a strong and skilled command staff to ensure succession planning for the future, a staff that is responsible for the overall planning, coordination, and direction of police patrol, investigations, the 911 call center, other call taking and dispatching systems, prisoner care and custody, police clinician programming, civilian oversight programming, and the records bureau. The Canton Fire Department, led by Director Chris Stockline, is committed to providing the highest caliber of service to the community. The department is a full-service career fire department, providing fire suppression, emergency medical services, rescue, fire prevention, public education, code enforcement, fire investigation, hazardous material response, and technical rescue. Canton has secured funding for a fourth fire station with a $7 million grant through the state. The proposed project consists of building a new fire station in the southeast corner of the township, powered by alternative energy. Adding a fourth station will reduce fire department response times to Southeast Canton by up to six minutes. Response times from station number one to that area of the community can be up to 10 minutes. The Canton Fire Department purchased two Sutphin Heavy Duty S8 pumper engines. These engines will replace two older engines in the fleet to comply with NFPA standards and Township Fleet Services maintenance recommendations. Additional external storage will provide the firefighters with a space to store their gear outside of the cab, assisting with cancer prevention efforts. In 2023, the Canton Fire Department was able to put three new ambulances in service. The department follows a vehicle replacement schedule to ensure that all their emergency vehicles are kept in working order and available when needed. The new ambulances use gas rather than diesel for significant fuel cost savings. These new vehicles are also equipped with four-wheel drive, which will assist crews when responding to emergencies during hazardous weather. As many know, Canton Township suffered flooding and a tornado within 24 hours in August, with approximately five inches of rain falling across the township during that time. Police received 1,200 calls in 12 hours. The fire department responded to 132 calls in 48 hours, and our DPW received over 300 calls of flooding and flooded basements. 
Then came the tornado that passed through Canton. After experiencing 70 mile per hour wind gusts, close to 500,000 homes and businesses lost power in southern lower Michigan and caused other severe damage around the community. We had numerous trees knocked over and three picnic pavilions in Heritage Park were destroyed. All of our employees helped in one way or another. DPW and parks cleared the roads and sidewalks, removed trees and helped with flooded basements. Every office was fielding calls and providing information and other resources. And our CERT team, led by Will Hayes and a group of volunteers, including some employees and elected officials, went to homes and businesses that had filed flooding damage. The Michigan State Police were brought in, a flyover of Canton Township was conducted, and a state of emergency was declared in Canton Township, Wayne County, and passed to the state for approval to submit to the Federal Emergency Management Agency. We've since engaged the Army Corps of Engineers to study drainage in Canton and the region, partnering with other communities along the Rouge watershed. Working with Senator Debbie Stabenow and Congresswoman Debbie Dingell's office has helped us to move this process forward. We are expecting an estimate of work within the second quarter of 2024. Be assured that this community is in very good hands as we uphold public safety in every situation. Canton's Municipal Services Department, led by Director David Norwood, is made up of five divisions. Planning, Building, Engineering, Public Works and Facilities Maintenance. The department headed up the compost pilot program in 2023, which was very successful. Over 700 people signed up to volunteer, and of those, about 400 people actually collected their bin. There's a QR code on the bin that volunteers scan each time they drop off their compost at designated sites around the community. This helps us to gauge how many people are participating. On average, we get about 60 to 100 responses each week. The bins are collected once a week, and as of the end of the year, over 160,000 pounds of food waste have been diverted from the landfill. Michigan Consulting and Environmental runs the program, and they have told us that they take in 80 tons of yard and food waste a year and churn out 60 tons of compost, which is very impressive. The master plan project is making progress and will be finished in 2024. In 2023, planning services held numerous public engagement events to garner input for the update to the master plan from residents, property owners, business owners, and community stakeholders. Input from all engagement sessions will help guide the master plan advisory board, planning commission, and township board when drafting goals, policies, objectives, and initiatives in the master plan. Over 30 planning applications were approved for projects of all sizes. Highlights include BJ's Wholesale Club gas station, Raising Cane's Patel Brothers, Discount Tiger on Michigan Avenue, and two multi-tenant commercial buildings. Last year, approximately 275 trees were removed, about half of which were removed by Public Works Division, and 270 trees were planted. Many removals were pear trees nearing the end of their life, as well as those damaged during the summer storm. The zoning ordinance was amended to allow for solar energy installations, including on rooftops. Since then, I'm happy to report that many residents have installed solar energy systems. Canton's Building and Inspection Division is responsible for ensuring that township standards for local building codes, ordinances, and construction are met. This office also issues multiple fence, pool, plumbing, mechanical, compliance, electrical, and other miscellaneous permits. This division experienced yet another busy year, completing 21,000 943 inspections and issuing 11,205 permits for a total valuation of $150,432,888.31. Facilities maintenance oversaw the construction of the Summit Pool Tile Remodel, which included new tile and sauna, all four aquatic locker rooms, activities pool, lazy river, and lap pool. The division also installed high efficiency boilers at the summit, increasing efficiency from 80 to 98 percent, saving approximately $7,000 a year in energy costs. Public Works was awarded the APWA Downriver Branch Project of the Year for the Joy Road Water Main Project. This project consisted of adding 5,000 feet of new water main along Joy Road to connect a gap in the system. Public Works also added the first all-electric fleet vehicle, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. The Mach-E is a pure electric zero emission driving car they can travel approximately 210 miles on a full charge. The addition of the Mach-E is consistent with the Township Board's goal of creating cleaner, more sustainable energy options. Since 2020, 
The board has approved the purchase of eight hybrid vehicles with seven more on order. Notable for the fuel efficiency, electric and hybrid vehicles can be a cost-effective way to reduce operating expenses. The price of electricity in the United States averages 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Typically, an electric car costs approximately 3 cents per mile, much lower than a gasoline car at 10 cents. Besides lower fuel costs, electric and hybrid vehicles also serve as a greener alternative to gas or diesel vehicles. By eliminating exhaust, they can reduce the fleet's greenhouse gas emissions. This advantage will help Canton stay sustainable and compliant with the government guidelines. Other notable Public Works highlights include over 1,000 manholes inspected, 450,000 feet of sewers cleaned, 38 water main breaks repaired, 185 stop boxes repaired, and 321 flooded basement calls related to the storms this year. Engineering Services completed the fifth year of the Road Improvement Program funded by the Millage. Over the last five years, the program has completed 25 major road projects and 81 local subdivision projects, totaling almost 40 miles of improvement to Canton Roads. In 2023, the program provided replacement of all pavement on lots and lily roads between Michigan Avenue and Palmer. Sheldon Road was also milled and resurfaced with asphalt from Warren Road to Sheldon Center. And Veterans Way received full reconstruction of the intersection at Summit Parkway and Veterans Way. The 2023 Sidewalk Repair Program repaired over 20,000 linear feet, approximately four miles of defective sidewalk. Additionally, 115 sidewalk ramps were repaired, bringing them into compliance with the American with Disabilities Act. During the Sidewalk Repair Program, Engineering Services also worked to install missing links of the sidewalk in the community. Last year, they installed 777 linear feet of sidewalk gaps, providing connectivity with the sidewalks in the community. Canton's Information, Technology, and Innovation Department, led by Director Victor Begbu, has a very busy 2023. The team unveiled a redesigned website in January, along with a new web address, cantonmi.gov. Visitors to the site are enjoying a fresh design, as well as new features, including a priority-based budgeting transparency dashboard and a resident feedback form. This redesign and moving to .gov also provides the township data and residents more security against cybersecurity attacks, which have been on the increase for many municipalities and companies. ITI staff implemented a new firewall system throughout the organization last year, and in the first nine months, the system deflected approximately 2 million attempts to gain access to our network. The Technology Committee, a work group comprised of residents who are interested in reviewing technology and developing strategy, hosted two very successful 24-hour appathons. Teams focused on how to utilize technology to serve Canton residents. At each event, the participants were spot on in creating apps for speaking to each other during crisis, translating documents, and finding information on happenings in Canton. It is clear we have found an incredible amount of talent and creativity in our community. ITI has been working on finding the best enterprise resource planning software for the organization. The ERP software solution, once launched, will allow us to better serve our residents. Additionally, ITI staff deployed 147 new computers, implemented DocuSign for enhanced document signing convenience within the legal department, finance, CLS, and ITI departments, and achieved the successful integration of Tyler's Utility Management and VSA's taxes with Invoice Cloud streaming payment and processes and enhanced efficiency for our residents. An initiative with Wayne County also found that our residents and businesses are not getting the services that local broadband providers promise. This information was found through a township-wide survey of our residents and businesses. This data will be used to push providers to improve their services to our community. The supervisor, resident advocate, IT director, and economic development manager visited many businesses asking them to also participate in the survey and found the same frustration with their broadband services. The FCC will be using data to push providers to improve services to our region. The Finance and Budget Department, led by Director Wendy Trumbull, successfully implemented priority-based budgeting in 2023 and has launched a dashboard on Canton's website that provides community members with an opportunity to see how funds and resources are being allocated across the township's department. It also shows how the programs align with the board's identified priorities and goals of transparency. 
For the 31st year in a row, the Governmental Finance Officers Association awarded the Township a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for its annual Comprehensive Finance Report. Their Certificate of Achievement is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting, and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management. When a Certificate of Achievement is awarded to a government, an Award of Financial Reporting Achievement is also presented to the individuals or departments designated by the government is primarily responsible for having earned the certificate. In addition to the day-to-day -day work that includes processing over 42,000 payroll checks each year and approximately 15,000 invoices, finance was also tasked with ensuring compliance with the many grants we received last year and keeping track of the budgets of numerous ongoing capital projects. This was done by developing a new capital improvement plan and working with every department to integrate the plan into future budgets. Hi, I'm Clerk Michael Segrest. 2023 was an extremely busy year for the clerk's office. We saw 6,080 voters register from January to December, leading to our highest voter registration number in Canton history at 78,621. I personally spent most of the year in Lansing helping the legislature craft laws implementing early voting, automatic ballot, return postage, and automatic registration, all provisions of the voter approved constitutional amendment passed in November of 2022. I also testified before the legislative committees of both the Michigan House and Senate on a bill that would allow young people to pre-register to vote before turning 18. I was elected president of the Association of Wayne County Clerks and vice president of the Michigan Association of Municipal Clerks. Additionally, I was asked to serve on Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson's Proposal to Implementation Committee to help change technology and guidelines to implement the legislation signed by the governor. We issued 1,857 dog licenses and 857 dog park memberships. We worked with the Wayne County Commission to allow for three-year dog licenses for the first time ever. 2024 will be our inaugural year helping folks save money and time while prioritizing office efficiency by licensing dogs who receive a three-year rabies vaccine for the entire duration of the vaccine. The clerk's office started offering passport services and helped 1,329 Canton residents get their passport. Looking forward to 2024, we will be working hard to implement the new voting rights enshrined in the Michigan Constitution. We will be educating residents on early voting, which will be located at both the Summit on the Park and the Village Arts Factory for all three of our statewide elections. February and August elections will see nine days of early voting, while the township will be offering 14 days in November. There are five new drop boxes located throughout the township so that voters who choose to join the automatic ballot list will be able to conveniently return their ballot safely and securely. Hi, I'm Treasurer Diane Slavens. The Treasurer's Office continues to be busy assisting our residents collecting payments and answering questions. We're always working to improve customer service. One improvement we did last year was launching a new online payment program. This is an easier, customer-friendly program that allows payment options for our residents. We've had fantastic feedback from our residents regarding the new online payments. Water and Billing also continues to be busy assisting our residents. This division worked closely with our ITI department on the new online payment invoice cloud. This new system was introduced last year and we've had great success with this program. We've noticed an increase in the auto draft enrollment and our office has seen a significant drop in late payments since introducing this program. I'm happy to say this year, we've even had fewer delinquent water bill accounts roll over to the winter tax. This is another decrease from last year, rolling over $24,796.31 this year, which is $2,579.66 less than last year. As always, we continue to work on improvements to give the best customer service to our Canton residents. Looking forward to 2024, we are excited to announce that thanks in part to several funding opportunities, we are in the process of upgrading several park areas. In the coming year, a new multi-purpose pavilion will be erected to replace a historic barn 
that unfortunately burnt down in 2020. This new safe facility will provide additional programming space for the farmer's market, special events, and historic demonstrations. Moving forward, Leisure Services is as committed as ever providing individuals and families with ongoing health and wellness opportunities. In that spirit, a renewed emphasis will be placed on offering resources and services for the newly emerging senior. Additionally, with two active golf courses in Canton, we will continue to develop new generations of golfers by providing players with opportunities at both Pheasant Run Golf Club and Fellows Creek Golf Club to grow into the game and enjoy its many benefits. On behalf of the Canton Board of Trustees, thank you to our residents and employees for making Canton a wonderful community we can all be proud of. You belong here. Thank uh, Amory uh, for that informative uh, delivery of our 2024 State of uh, Canton Township Address. Uh, the Canton Chamber is proud of our strong partnership and relationship with, uh, with you, Anna Marie, with Canton Township uh, in general, and, and we thank you. Um, before we close, of course, we would like to thank our sponsors once again, uh, Jack Demmer Ford and also Schoolcraft College. Round of applause for our sponsors once more. <laughs> And we have just a few brief announcements that we would like to make known to everyone before you begin to, to exit. Um, the first, uh, there's some uh, really great uh, events, community events that we have coming up over the next uh, several months. Um, the first that I will mention is the actual, the, the 25th anniversary of Relay for Life of Canton and Plymouth, 25 years of the American Cancer Society ho uh, hosting this great event uh, here in Canton. The date is gonna be May 18th. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. at Heritage Park. Uh, please come out and support this event. Uh, it's a special year, as I mentioned, it's the 25th anniversary, so it's gonna be uh, just a wonderful event. If you have any questions um, about this event, uh, please see uh, Denise Staffeld. Uh, she had a, a booth out front. Uh, she represents our, our Canton Chamber team, and she makes sure that uh, the Chamber always is involved in that event, and we couldn't do that without, without Denise's help. So uh, mark your calendars for May 18th for the American Cancer Society Relay for Life. We will see you there. Um, the next event that I would like to uh, make known to you is the National Civics Bee. Uh, in fact, the Canton Chamber uh, is uh, proud to be one of six chambers in the state of Michigan that have been selected to participate uh, in this event by the United States Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this event is the first of its kind here in the state of Michigan. Uh, and it's supporting, as we say, it's supporting the future of our community. Uh, we are engaging sixth, seventh, and eighth graders um, in dialogue about being civically engaged. And so why are we doing this? Well, the Canton Chamber of Commerce, along with the Michigan Chamber of Commerce, uh, are participating in the National Civics Bee because we believe that informed and active citizens make for a strong community, a strong economy, and a strong workforce. And our continued prosperity actually depends on all three of those things coexisting together. Through the National Civics Bee, we are promoting greater civic knowledge here in Canton and across the state of Michigan and educating students in celebrating civic engagement. Uh, a total of 20 students will be moving to the live uh, version of this Civics Bee, which will be held on April 23rd. Uh, the event will begin at 4 p.m. with a business networking event uh, in conjunction with the Ann Arbor Ypsilanti Chamber of Commerce. The actual Civics Bee starts at 6.30. It will be held at Eastern Michigan University in the Student Center. Uh, we also would like to recognize our sponsors, our major sponsors for this event, which are Eastern Michigan University and Jacob Matthew Jewelers. Um, 20 students will be competing for cash prizes uh, at this event. 
One student will be going to the state competition that will be hosted by the Michigan Chamber of Commerce in Lansing, and then one student from that state competition will uh, compete uh, for the chance to go to the national competition in Washington, D.C., hosted at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce office, and um, they will win, I believe, Pam, a $50,000 cash prize? At that, at that national e event. So um, we are rooting for um, as students from Plymouth Canton um, and surrounding communities that are uh, being hosted at our local event. Uh, more information about all of the events that I'm talking about will be on the front table outside. And a quick shout out to um, uh, Canton Chamber's own uh, Pamela Batchel for spearheading this initiative for us. Uh, so please mark your calendars for that. We're so excited to be participating uh, in this event, engaging our youth in, uh, in our civics of our community. Just a couple of more announcements, bear with me. Uh, we are relaunching our Mastermind uh, group. Uh, Mastermind is a professional business women's group designed to bring dynamic women in our community together to motivate, collaborate, and elevate one another. Uh, thank you to our co-chairs of this committee, uh, Kelly Smith, and also Commissioner Melissa Dobb for co-chairing this, this group for us. Uh, April 4th, uh, there's going to be a mastermind event held at the local tavern uh, here in Canton from 4 to 6 p.m. And then the official kickoff meeting will happen on April 22nd. Again, this flyer will be uh, out in the front lobby for you to grab on your way out. And lastly, but certainly not least, uh, the Canton Chamber is hosting its annual golf outing. Uh, this year's theme is uh, Margaritaville. Uh, so uh, it's going to be held at uh, Pheasant Run Golf Club on Friday, May 17th with a start of 9 a.m. So, so don't miss this fantastic event. Uh, we also have a 50-50, I believe, Pam, as well. And uh, I believe, is Anne-Marie still? Anne-Marie, would you like to pull that winning ticket for us, please? I believe the jackpot is $100. We'll put the pressure on Anne-Marie to pull that ticket. I don't want that pressure. Go for it. Four, four, five. Zero, two, three, zero. Four, four, five. Zero, two, three, zero. There you go. All right, we have a winner. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Canton Chamber of Commerce and Supervisor Graham Hudak, I thank you for joining us this afternoon. Drive safely, and we look forward to seeing all of you at our 2025 State of the Township Address. And lastly, if you are a Canton Township employee, please stick around, join us on stage for a group photo. Okay, thank you ladies and gentlemen, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>